Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm starting a new series on the basics of malware. This applies to both malware analysis and malware development. In this video, we are going to look at PE files. Now there is a lot of theoretical material out there related to PE files. So in this series, we are going to focus on writing and discussing code. In this video, we will quickly look at the overview of PE files. Then we will move on to write our first executable and DLL in C. With that, let's get started. So here I am in my virtual machine. Before we start creating our first PE files, let me give you a quick overview of PE files. Anything that executes on a Windows system is usually a PE file. We have the executables, we have the dynamic click libraries, then we have the drivers, the kernel and the boot code as well is in the form of a PE file. Let us look at some other details related to a P file. This is an overview of how the P file looks like on disk and in memory. If we look at a P file on disk, the P file is usually created uh, via some sort of a compilation process of code. The P file is created on disk and it has the P file header, the .x section, data section, R data section, and relog section. When it is executed, the Windows loader will load the PE file in memory. And after that, we'll see that the PE file header is going to be there. The text section is going to be there, which is going to have some permissions assigned to it. Here, the text section has read and execute permissions. Then we have some padding. Then we have the data section. We have read write uh, permissions here. Then we have the padding again. Then we have dot R data section and then the relog section. We can look at this in a demo as well i have a p file here let us look at this in a hex editor i have hxd and i will open up welcome.exe we see that the executable starts off with an mz header then we have that this program cannot be run in dos mode then we have the pe header over here then we have some details related to the dot text section dot data section dot r data section dot p data section dot x data etc etc mind you this is not the actual text section or the data section or whatever these are some details or rvas related to the uh, actual uh, data of the section the text section which usually start at 400 here so we can see this is 400 and it starts with C366. How can I confirm that this is actually the text section and the text data? We can run the application. So double click on this and then we can attach this to a debugger. File attach. Debugger welcome.exe. We can go to our memory map. In the memory map, we can see that the welcome.exe has a base address of this. Then we have the dot text section here. I will double click on this and right click on this and say follow in a dump. We can see C366662E and it starts up at this area. And we can also see this here, C366662E. So as I said, this is actually the uh, start of the text section data. Okay, if we go down, we will also see the string that was printed on the screen, which is going to be uh, welcome to the malware development course. I think it's quite down. Let's look for it quickly. I think it went up this one welcome to malware development course okay so let's close this and let's close this that was a quick overview of PE files this is a huge topic in itself and we will look at the details as and when uh, we are required to understand them let us now start off by creating our first executable I will be using Visual Studio 2022 this is the preview version uh, community preview version you can use any other version that you have available with you the code should work um in any version that you have so empty project here next i will create my code in the dev yt folder on the desktop and i will say sample 
E X Z. The code will be written in C. So I will say source dot C. And here we'll have include std io dot h include windows dot h uh, int main void and we now have the print f statement this is a sample exe dot backslash n this is uh, backslash n is going to add a new line uh, when the application will start as soon as it will print this line it is going to uh, exit so we have to make sure that the application waits for us to enter a character that will be enabled by the get char api let's play this build succeeded and we can see that the string is printed it is now waiting on the next line for us to input a character press enter and it will exit now this is a sample executable there are multiple ways in which the executable can be built debug and release i'm going to build a release version of the application as well and we can go to our sample executable folder x64 release and we have our sample executable here now we can look at the p file in another way as well we can use this application which is p studio and this is going to help us uh, with some further details of the p file we can see that this p file has a hash here then we can see some other details related to this p file we have the sections we talked about the dot text section our data data uh and relock but there are other sections as well that can be added to ap file in this case we see that there is a resource section okay there are strings as well present in a p file and we can see them here p studio really extracts them uh properly and you can see them here in a in a nice and organized way this is the this is the string that we added in our uh, code all right so this was a quick overview of the sample executable now let us take this one step further usually when i create uh, any executable specifically for uh, for offensive development uh, red teaming or malware development i will add some sort of a logging in that so i have uh, some files in the resources folder that i'm going to add to our project and i'm going to show you how i use them so paste it here and then going to add those uh, files as part of this project existing item log.c and log.h we have the log.h added in the header files and log.c in the source file we can include the file into our uh, main by adding log.h over here and this is going to allow us to use the functions that are available in the log.h and c files let's now look at the log.h file if you look at the log.h file i have added some capabilities related to logging and here are some comments related to the logging if you set up logging enable is equal to 2 it is going to log in the debug view only we are going to talk about that uh, shortly if we set up one which means that it's going to log in the console and the debug view if we set up zero which means it is disabled usually when i am debugging an application i will set up either two or one and when the application is going to be released i will set it up as zero okay because i don't want uh, any of my uh, live uh, applications to have logging enabled now how do i use this okay uh, i have to use the function which is uh, dprintf over here it is print enabled here if you look at the log.h file uh, dprintf 
and the way to use it is very simple you can add here d print f and you can see uh, in fact you can add a comma here and see info okay there are multiple tags we have info we have wording we have error so i have set up info here and if i press play here you can see that there is nothing being printed here this is because of the debug settings if i go to law.h it is set to 2 which is going to be debug view only let us add the logging to the console and the debug view and let us play it now and we can see that the logging is coming up in the console as well so what about the debug view we can go to the debug view application which is installed as part of sys internals and let us play this application again so this is printed here and it is going to be printed here as well in order to enable logging to the debug view, you have to run this uh, debug view dot file, which I will provide in the GitHub repo linked in the description of the video. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, this uh, debugging is extremely important for me. Now, if I want to totally disable the debugging or I don't want any debugging on the console, I don't really want to show the console at all, right? Because this is an application which should be uh, hidden. So here, in this case, I will say that if logging, logging enabled not equal to one, which means that there is no logging going to happen on the console itself, I want to say free console. What free console means is that any action on the console is going to be disabled so get char is an action on the control printing is an action on the control the showing of the console itself is on the console so all of this is going to be disabled and after that i'm going to set up the logging to the debug view only we have one debug print currently let us now play our application So it says cannot open sample.exe because it is already running. Let us play this again. Now the, the console will not show up in a normal release application. We'll, I will show you this um, and we can see that this is a sample exe was printed. Now let me close this and show you this in a release version if i go to sample exe x64 release we have the sample exe here it will open and close and something has been printed on the debug view which means the application actually executed and it exited very very quickly okay so this is the way that i usually create my sample applications all right so we've looked at a sample exe file let me quickly close this and let us now create a DLL file as well. Create a new project. Same empty project. Sample DLL. The folder is going to be devyt. Create. Okay, add new item again it's going to be source.c and we'll have to go to our properties all configurations instead of the executable we'll have to set it up as a dln apply okay now i have some code here with me related to a dll i will copy this here and then we can talk about it in the previous sample executable we saw that a main function was required in the case of a dll a dll main function is required the dll main function is usually empty it has these case statements and then break statements as well the main functionality of a dll happens inside the exports in this case the export name is start and it is declared like this inside the start function i'm getting the process 
that current process and from here after we get the handle to the current process we are getting the process id after that we are getting the process name get module file name and from here we are setting up a string in the message uh, character array from here the message is going to be printed in a message box all of this is going to help us uh, show the process id and the process name which is going to be printed inside the message box let us now compile this application i'm going to compile this in release mode Control shift p it has been compiled let's go to our sample dll x64 release and we have the sample dll here okay open up the terminal now the specific situation in a dll is that it does not execute by itself in order to execute a dll we have to put it inside a container so the container here is going to be run dll32 i'm going to put the name of the dll here and i'm also going to put the name of the export now here we see that the name of the export is starting with a small s and actually the name is capital s let's see what happens we see that it was not able to find this export this is one of the only cases where i've seen windows is particular about uh, case sensitivity so we have to make sure that the case is correct so when i add capital s here it will execute and we will see our message box all right so that was uh, a very very quick introduction to p files we looked at a quick overview we looked at creation of a sample executable we saw how we can add logging over there and now we saw how we can create a sample dll as well okay in the upcoming videos we are going to look at uh, enumerating processes dll injection local shellcode execution remote shellcode execution this is going to be the foundation for us to start looking at advanced scenarios like api hooking uh, indirect syscalls uh, module stomping etc etc all right so that brings us to the end of this video thank you very much for your time